Twitch cooperates with us. Do you guys feel it? Do you feel like we're live? Because I feel like we're live, I think. I feel the same. I don't feel any yeah. different. Second <laughs> screen option where you could confirm we're live. I have, I have confirmation that we are, in fact, live. Um, Fantastic. Welcome. Nothing that kicks off a live cast better than people asking you for live. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. What's going are on? Here? It's, it's like, tradition. Wait, what? Are we here? Yeah, it's become a, a ritual. It has we become did. a ritual for us. We, uh, we, we ask that question every time. Um, so welcome one and all to the first uh, session uh, for Knights Black Agents here on Myth Brigade and the first time that Byron has uh, directed, in this case, a game. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Byron, and we have an extra special guest that I'm going to let you announce, but I could not be more excited uh, than to have him here with us to kick this thing off. So without further ado, Byron, uh, GM, DM, director, you name it, uh, let's do this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Jason. I greatly am honored to be here and be part of Myth Brigade with all you fabulous individuals and uh, live on the interwebs and uh, I think Jason always says uh, I'm Byron and I'm your host but he, he <laughs> says Jason of course um, but so excited to be here uh, we have some wonderful uh, wonderful special guest here for you uh, author Kenneth Height the man who wrote the Knights Black Agents game to kind of uh, crashed a proverbial champagne bottle on the bow of uh, of this chapter of uh, Myth Brigade and uh, very, very excited to uh, to have that. Uh, in the uh, upper right hand corner, we have Mr. Dan Kaplan uh, and uh, below him, we have Mr. Tyler Wingate, uh, who shares the pleasure of not only playing in this game, but also being my son. Well, what a uh, pleasure it must be. <laughs> and then we have uh, yes. <laughs> Miss Lovely Tara Roy, and uh, I had to practice your name several times to make sure I had it right today. Uh, it only yeah. took you like five years. Only five years, <laughs> right? I mean, that's that's minor in the scheme of things, right? Um, when you're when you're immortal and you're alive forever, it's, that's just a couple couple years. Uh, and then we have Mr. Brent Adams, uh, the fabulous uh, guy who can run just about any kind of character. Uh, and, and keep you wondering if he's uh, role playing or if that's just the way he is. And uh, <laughs> then we have, of course, Mr. Jason Jones, uh, yep. the uh, guy who owns this place and is uh, allowing us to hang out here. And myself, Byron Wingate. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Kenneth Height to uh, kind of give us some uh, thoughts on Night Black Agents and uh, what type of thing you might be able to experience and let these guys know uh, what maybe they're in for. Right. Uh, this is, as we were saying before the show, this was a game that I sort of came up with kind of out of whole cloth. I was... Uh, standing at the uh, at a train stop uh, in Chicago, waiting for the train to carry me home from the game that I was running. I'd left at a friend's apartment. I was standing on the, on the, on the train stop downtown. It was a hot day. Uh, the wind was sort of blowing. It was deserted. So it's nighttime. There's weird noises. There's wind. And I thought, well, this is, this is vampire night. This is vampire time. And then in maybe 30 seconds, it occurred to me, there's not a good vampire hunting game anymore because Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the great Buffy game had sort of gone away. Hunter the Vigil was between incarnations at the moment. And I thought there's no great vampire hunting game. Who hunts vampires now? If, they've, if, if I'm waiting for a vampire, where, <laughs> where's the hunter? Who is he? And I thought, well, Jason Bourne, that's who hunts vampires. Super spies hunt vampires. That's, that's who you send after them. And in about 30 seconds, I'd flashed on the middle... Uh, fight in the middle Jason Bourne movie in Munich where he uh, fights the Eskrima fight with the uh, the double agent in, in Munich and he kills him with the magazine and I remember thinking if that had been a stake that would be a, a fight that you could have in this game <laughs> and then I thought what game? Oh, am I writing a game now? And basically on the train down I thought I think that we could do this with Nice Black Agents uh, as a terror fact book had just come out so there was sort of um, uh uh, fun variations on uh, more standard gumshoe combat. Obviously, I was, you know, I'd always known that a thriller is, as they say, a speeded up detective story where you already know who did it. 
Um, and so the, 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 the structure was there and I just thought, well, can, is it playable? And within not too long, I'd sold Simon on the idea that if I could get a playable manuscript to him, he'd publish it. And I sold my game group on the idea of play testing something that I was writing, which is not the usual way that they do things at all. Um, or that I do things at all, but I was just really in the grip of this notion. And we, we, we ran a, a, a fun, uh, I hope campaign, uh, for nice black agents. It took forever to name it. I was calling it the Nosferatu Gambit in alpha, which is a terrible title. Um, I mean, it's good for a book, but it's a terrible role-playing game title. And then, you know, I was sort of, uh, I think it was Jeff Tidball who gave me the idea. He says, why don't you just steal something from Shakespeare? That's your normal thing to do. If you can't come up with anything good yourself. <laughs> And I said, oh, that's a good idea. So I did. I took that from Macbeth, and so it's Knights Black Agents. Um, so the, the the genesis of that game was, and the elevator pitch has remained, Jason Bourne versus vampires. Jason Bourne versus Dracula. This is the concept behind the game. So uh, gumshoe games, in general, always assume that you're competent, that you're able to spot clues and follow them up. Uh, nice black agent takes the next step and assumes you're badass. Uh, so you are, um, you can certainly play a, a de-rezzed or what we call a dust mode game where you're more John like, uh, John like Ray heroes and less Robert Ludlum heroes or less, um, uh, Doug Lyman, uh, film Robert Ludlum heroes. And, uh, that's fun certainly because spy fiction is fun, but the goal is to be a spy thriller, not necessarily a spy novel. And that, requires characters who have a degree of, of danger and competence to them until, of course, they run into something even worse, which is the vampires. Uh, from that point, I, uh, you know, had been saying Jason Bourne uh, versus Dracula enough times to Simon and at the booth that uh, Simon said, so are we doing a versus Dracula? And that cross-pollinated with a concept that I'd thought of a long time ago, there was a book called The uh, Case for the UFO written by a guy named Morris Jessup. And some unknown correspondent sent a copy of it, annotated in three separate types of handwriting to the uh, Office of Naval Intelligence. And the Office of Naval Intelligence, rather than throwing it in the garbage, uh, went to a uh, printing company called Vero Press and had 50 copies of this book uh, bound up with the annotation saved and then circulated around all the UFO uh, hunting parts of the U.S. government. And that became sort of a legendary text when I was a kid in the 70s that if you could see the Vero Press edition, that would clear everything up. Of course, it didn't because it was nonsense. <laughs> but that sort of was part of my personal mythology. I thought, what about a Vero Press Dracula? What about a copy of Dracula that had been annotated by mysterious unknown hands to give you the secret story of Dracula and the secret story of Dracula occurred to me very obviously oh this is this is a spy novel this is a this is a failed recruitment attempt this is a cover-up this is the disinformation so I I very rapidly came up with the idea of the Dracula dossier which is uh to have these sort of multiple narratives of Dracula and the fun and the job of the players and the GM would be to collaborate and build the story together so as you move into the Dracula dossier uh, the GM will be, you know, desperately uh, dancing and, and spinning plates and backpedaling and doing all the things GMs do. But you, the players, will get to grab stuff that you find interesting and that you find compelling. Um, and that you'll be able to say, I think this is a core part of the conspiracy. And guess what? Uh, it can be because we, uh, myself and my uh, hardworking and uh, much put upon co-author Gareth Ryder Hanrahan, uh, wrote possibilities for everything in the novel, everything we came up with that might be in a spy thriller and a lot of other side tangles that we got ourselves caught up in. Uh, so there's different versions of every possible character, every possible NPC, every place you might go, every conspiracy you might stumble across. Uh, it's for you to decide that those things are important and fun and exciting. And since you've decided they're exciting, uh, Byron doesn't have to worry. Oh, I hope they find this exciting because you already <laughs> told him you found it exciting because you went and investigated and you and you said, I want to go beat up that Icelandic diplomat or I want to go uh, uh, burgle that uh, London psychic or I want to go uh, uh, 
uh, be chased by predator drones driven by the uh, CIA man in Bucharest, whatever it is, uh, that's the uh, that's the thing that then Byron can rotate into your story. Uh, the goal was that no two games of Dracula Dossier are the same. It's not like uh, any of the other great classic campaigns that have all got the same story arc. You're building the story arc. You're collaborating on it. So you're going to be able to sort of take hold of your destiny and uh, drive your story in the way that a thriller hero somehow miraculously always stumbles over exactly the right information that he needs to move forward. Uh, we're sort of uh, shining a, a lantern on that, holding it up, and making it the the, the goal and the engine that, that drives uh, the game. You don't have to say, "Oh, I, I hope we're we're going in the right direction." The direction you're going is by definition the right direction because did I mention you're Jason Bourne? You're badass. Of course, it's the right direction. Trained super spies like yourself wouldn't be led off by a bunch of red herrings and nonsense. Whatever. Uh, thing you've grabbed onto, that's going to be the thing that's going to excite and thrill and uh, terrify you. Um, and I hope that uh, Byron is like nodding along and agreeing with me as opposed to yeah. saying, oh, no, that's not how it's going to work. <laughs> no. Oh, that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly. So, uh, so like Ken alluded, I didn't like uh, kind of let you guys in on that. But uh, yeah, so we will be, we're going to start with a, a scenario called the Harker Intrusion, which will basically lead you to the Dracula dossier uh, game. So that is outstanding. I have a question. So well, I, I think it's really cool. Go ahead, Brent. I'll go. I was going oh, no, to say, I think, I think it's really cool. Cause it's like knowing, knowing the way Byron is, it's going to be like, <laughs> it, we could, we could mess it up really bad and it's going to look really messy, but we're probably going to get there anyway. But it'll be so, super cool when we get, when we get there. Yeah. Except that yeah, this time I mean, I've provided Byron the, the on-ramp to let him get back onto back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll take a couple U turns to get there, right. but we'll eventually. Get there. <laughs> or, or more likely, Gareth did. Yeah, yeah. Ken, what was Guaranteed. your biggest challenge when you when you took this project on? Because you know, throughout the years, I've attempted. I'm a writer as well, and I've attempted to start some projects of similar magnitude, and they found their way to the bottom drawer of my desk. So, like, what what was the biggest challenge, and how did you overcome it? I mean, the I, the I think the biggest challenge was the one that was overcome by by Pelgrane. And it was deciding to risk uh, uh, this game. I mean, they, uh, Simon Greenlit the project and uh, Kat Tobin, the, the co-publisher at uh, Pelgrane, sort of took it over as her uh, project. And they both gave, you know, they, they gave me a salary, uh, which a lot of it was spent, you know, a lot of that time was spent doing research. And they basically trusted that at the end of the process, there would be a, 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 a big... Uh, tentpole evergreen campaign product at the end. And I think that Gar uh, Gareth and I delivered that. Um, and that was really the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest risk or the biggest obstacle was who would, who would pay for this? And Pelgrain, uh, I think has got a sort of a reputation of, of wanting to produce games punching way above its level. I mean, it, it, Pelgrain is, is, is two and a half people in an office basically. And, and they try to produce like they're a much bigger company. Um, and, uh, I was happy to, 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 be part of that. Obviously there was a lot of sort of challenges on the way. I think poor Gareth and I must've read Dracula maybe a dozen <laughs> times each by the end of it. So a lot of it was just making sure that whatever wonderful ideas we had could be inserted relatively seamlessly into Dracula or would come relatively seamlessly out of Dracula. And that was, uh, some of the, some of the job that the, we, we very early on, I decided to tie it to historical uh, earthquakes in Romania because one of the weird sub uh, structures, and I hope I'm not giving anything away, Brian, yeah. is that as Bram Stoker uh, drafted the novel, uh, it ends with a giant volcanic explosion that destroys Castle Dracula. And so there's a lot of things in the novel that are him sort of leading up to it and uh, Van Helsing dropping notes about his friend, the seismologist, and uh, talking about the earthquakes and the weird gases in the valley. And then at literally the last minute, he cuts all that out. It's all taken out of the book. And so uh, I was, I, I thought, well, that's a classic cover up, right? We, we know that the seismology is somehow important. So I tied it to those earthquakes, but that meant that we had to change the actual dates that the uh, story took place in because the historical earthquakes in Romania that matched when we wanted to set it, didn't work on those dates. So 
uh, Gareth and I, I think realized kind of at the last minute that as we're going through Dracula rewriting it, we have to change all the snow to like really hot weather and, and things like that. So that was, uh, uh, that was something, but Gareth was so proud when he discovered that Dracula's um, uh, a big uh, gathering uh, 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 before the, uh, uh, the the heroes stop him was on Friday the 13th in our new calendar. We couldn't have been more proud than that. So uh, it, 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 it all like worked omen, out right? uh, really well. It was, it was just, it, the, the scope of it was very, very, you know, immense. And like I say, my only task was just keep writing and, uh, I mean, ha- having Gareth as your co-writer is the best way in the world to get a, a great product out the door. I'll tell you that. And then, you know, uh, just keep paying my mortgage by producing this book and making sure that it was something that at the end of the day, Pelgrain said, yeah, we, we're glad we did that and we'll do it again next time you have a dumb idea, Ken. And I mean, that's and, spawned uh, so many <laughs> products as well. And I was just, you know, doing a little more research on the background of the book because, you know, Byron really introduced me to the game. Um, and you won, you know, two silver Ennies at, uh, from a train epiphany. I love that. Just that you're, you're wandering around looking at the scenery as you're about to hop on the train and you decide, all right, I got to take this forward and you wind up winning awards for it. So that's, mm-hmm. that's fantastic. Uh, very cool. Yeah. And that was just for Knights Black Agents. Dracula Dossier won many, many gold Ennies. So good for us. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. Um, but, but, but yeah, the, um, yeah, it, it was just such a powerful sort of sensory input. And it's not very much like other things that I've made. I mean, most things I make, I, I get the idea like in the pages of a book. And I think, oh, this is a cool concept. What can I spin out of this? But this was very much a sensory feeling like I'm on a train stop. It is dark. There are vampires here. <laughs> what do I do about that? And, and it was the process of sort of, I don't say exorcising, but returning to that thought over and over and over as I wrote the book that sort of powered Knights Black Agents. So, and I, and I think part of that is the sort of uh, verisimilitude. You don't want to say realism because obviously no one who has watched uh, Born Identity believes it's realistic, but it has a it's verisimilitude not. to it <laughs> oh. that I think makes it uh, different and exciting and modern in a way that even the best of the James Bond movies doesn't have. Absolutely, uh, and, I agree. And, and, that's, and, that, and that's the sort of spirit that I wanted Knights Black Agents to have because I think that, uh, along with Lovecraft, I think that the secret to horror is fooling people into thinking it could be happening right now, that hmm. basically you're writing a hoax and that uh, on the other side of that hoax is going to be, I mean, in this case, it's going to be Cthulhu, but in, in this case, vampires. Right. And yeah. the more research you do, the more convincing it becomes that there are a secret cabal of vampires out there <laughs> messing with stuff. I, uh, I actually watched a YouTube video last night, Ken, doing my research. My, my character is, is a bit paranoid, and uh, I watched like an hour on vampire lore, and it was just little slices from all over the world. And I might actually be convinced that vampires are real after all the research I've done to get ready for this game. Yeah, just so just a cover-up. <laughs> just a big, a big cover-up. Yeah. Keanu Reeves and Nick Cage. You know, yeah, exactly. Totally. That explains Everybody knows lot, it. Right? No, I think what's cool about the horror, the, the, the horror thing is that, um, and what I like about Night's Black Agents makes it so neat, is you don't know jack shit about vampires right from the start. And so you don't know what myths are right and which are wrong. And a lot of that's like, I think, left up to the GM to kind of figure that out. Yeah, yeah so it we, is. And so we could get really experimental as we're playing this and be completely wrong. Right. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Uh, the, the mechanics of the Knights Black Agents game are there to kind of, they could be supernatural vampires, they could be alien vampires, it could be a, uh, a disease. Uh, it, you can really, you can have multiple of them, you know, they don't, they don't all have to be from one particular locale. It could be, yeah. it could be you know, several different ways. And I, I just, that, at first when I started wrapping my head around the Dracula dossier and, and trying to run it and, and the game itself, I was really overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, extremely overwhelmed. And I watched a couple of YouTube videos on prepping and stuff like that. And I'm like, ah, this, this isn't that bad. <laughs> this is pretty I mean, it's, it, it, it's sort of the, the big problem you have with a, with a, a certainly a sort of a, what they call traditional role playing game is that I want at least uh, to present something that everyone can potentially play and enjoy. I want it to be for the biggest possible audience. 
And what that means to me is not saying, here is my one true story about vampires that you have to listen to. This is me saying, what kind of spies do you like? What kind of vampires do you like? Somewhere they can meet and kill each other. <laughs> uh, we have to believe that. And so a lot of it is, you know, the, the modes in the game and the various uh, options that player characters have is about how powerful do you want the players to be? How powerful the players want to be? How much, uh, how many options do they want? And then the same thing with the vampires. And so when you look at the book and you weigh it in your hand, yeah, it does feel like a, a lot and there's a lot of special cases, but most of those are in the service of providing as wide and accessible a bunch of options as I possibly can to players because not everyone, I mean, very few people statistically are me. So I could have written the game that was literally just <laughs> Ronin with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the vampires from Tim Powers in it. Uh, but most people are not gigantic fans of Ronin or Tim Powers. And so I needed to sort of blow the, the core concept out a little bit. And that was, you know, that was part of the, the goal. And then in play, uh, the idea is sort of that in my experience, players are really good at finding special cases that make them more powerful. So I didn't feel like adding more special cases to make players powerful was as bad an idea as a lot of people seem to think it is. In my experience, players are very, very smart and very, very gifted at edge cases. And, oh no, I get a plus two in that. And I, as the, as the game designer and the GM, I have discovered a remarkable capacity on players' part to to come up with reasons they win. So I don't think that that, uh, the, the, those number of options with the special cherries overwhelm the game uh, because the GMing is still very, very simple. It's still gumshoe at, at its heart. And, uh, you know, if if you're worried uh, that, uh, you know, the players are too powerful, first of all, you haven't read the word vampire enough. But second <laughs> of all, um, just add more aberrance points. And suddenly the players are not too powerful again. The problem has solved itself, really. And okay. this, you know, th this sort of spirit of, of game design, I guess, came out of playing Call of Cthulhu for like eight or nine years uh, in high school and college it, when, when game balance was just not even a thing because <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> it's, oh, no, you have a Tommy gun. All right, now there are three deep ones. Well, that problem <laughs> solved itself. <Yeah. laughs> And and if you can survive the fight, now you're insane and you're going to kill all yep. of your friends. As yeah. our extra bonus, you can take <laughs> your Tommy gun and mow down all of your all of your buddies. It's a good it's a good solution. And so, I've never really felt that uh, that that maintaining some sort of stark minimalist set of game rules is the end all and be all because most games you're going to play ideally more than once, and so you might want to say, "I'm going to try a different build." I'm I want to build a, a hacker, not a not a wheel man, or I want to build a a, a, a black bagger, uh, not a muscle. And so I want to play with these different other kind of rules. And that that way to interface you with the rules, I think, is it's kind of a fun thing about role playing. It's one of the it's one of the other things besides inhabiting a character or or getting to get your fictive yayas out massacring Serbian gangsters. Um, the, the, just the ability to sort of have fun tactically. It's one of the reasons Dungeons and Dragons is so hugely successful because so much of it is about having fun tactically. And I don't think that that's something that the rest of us should just throw over our shoulder. Uh, uh, not that there aren't wonderful games with very, very stripped down rules, but I feel like something like Knights Black Agents, which is meant to be in the traditional game space and meant to be played many, many times, uh, needs to have a little more, a little more robustness, a deeper menu, if you will. That is amazing. And I got to say, I mean, you know, I, I think, first of all, the writing in this is incredible, just absolutely incredible. I've read so many game books that the writing is sort of at a level that it just doesn't hold my attention. And so I appreciate your just the, 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 the texture that you wove into the book. So looking at your list of works, I mean, this goes all the way back. I feel like in some ways I'm like, my God, you've contributed to so many things that I love. Right. But um. How has your approach to game design evolved over the years? Because we're talking all the way back to GURPS and Star Trek and, you know, over the years. Give us some wisdom for those who want to take that thing out of the bottom drawer and actually finish it. I mean, well, the 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 secret of game design really is take it out of the bottom drawer and finish it. It's not like there's some sort of, you know, silver bullet methodology of design. And there's a lot, of, like every uh, every other 
artistic field, you know, one writer's tips are going to be the opposite of another writer's tips. One painter's methods are going to be another painter's, you know, never do this. So what I can say is that when I design, I do try to service what happens at the table first and foremost. I want players to feel like they're making mechanical choices that drive story. Hmm. And uh, I, I've said in other contexts that if you say your game is about something and you don't have rules for that something, then you're just lying to yourself. Your game is about whatever the rules are about. So you can say, oh, this is a game about true love and feeling terrible. But if you don't, your, your character doesn't mechanically alter if they're in love, then your game wasn't about being in love. Your game is just at best an opportunity for people to role play feeling in love. And you can do that in any role playing game. Uh, so if a game is about, you know, um, uh, conspiracies and, and vampires and, and solving uh, problems, obviously Gumshoe is a, is a great engine for problem solving. But if, I don't know if you've gotten into the part where you, it, when you map the cons pyramid, you gain pools of points to attack elements of the cons pyramid. That's uh, on the one hand that lets you feel like you know you're solving problems and getting you know psychic resources, even if not real resources. And also it uh, bribes players to do genre emulation, which is another thing that I think is super helpful in game design. If you want players to swing on chandeliers make that ridiculously more effective than not swinging on a chandelier and suddenly they're still swinging on chandeliers all day uh in, in my alpha play test for example the players never bothered to sketch out the conspiracy and it always made me very mad because they would like <laughs> you know lose uh, uh leads and they would get confused and they'd say ah that's probably nothing and, and we're bored we don't want to do that and so i i wrote those rules in literally to bribe future players to, to sketch the conspiracy out so that they would have a, a, an in-game reason to, to emulate genre in a way that I, the, the designer on Mount Olympus, wanted them to do it. And I guess those are my advice, my sort of practical advice is always consider table play. You know, what's what's this game going to feel like at the table? If you get a game that, that reads beautifully, and thank you very much for those compliments, um, but it doesn't do anything at the table, what you have is a very clunky novel. You don't <laughs> actually have a role-playing game. Yes. And so... Uh, or at best, you have a, a weird poem, um, but you don't have <laughs> you, you, you don't have a role playing game uh, in the in the sense that I, as an old grognard, grew up knowing about it. I mean, the kids today have role playing games that that do everything, but uh, for me, as, as a game designer, the mechanics or the or the structure of the game have to drive the kind of play and and maybe even the kind of role play that you that you want to see happen. That's awesome. And I think I love that you, the way you you've attached a lot of like really cool narrative things to to the skills, especially when you have your own unique skill, um, mm -hmm. and, and you and you you use that one big bang for the kind of like for the session, and then it's like just describe it in a narrative in a narrative sense about how awesomely you accomplished this, <laughs> and so I really like how that 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 cool narrative flow goes with it goes with that. <laughs> And, you know, it really encourages players to find like at least one or two things that they're like, that they're like pretty specialized in so that they can get that sweet capstone there. Yeah. The, um, the, the MOS uh, uh, rule is also a signal to the game master. Because if you're going to make a character, you say my MOS is going to be filch. The game master knows by and large, there should be filch challenges in the adventure. We should have a thing where our thief character can sort of shine. If you think about it as a little bit of an ensemble uh, set of characters, if you're writing a TV show, you don't have only one character do things all the time. You, you build it out. If you look at a show like the old Mission Impossible or Leverage or any of the ensemble shows, everyone has their cool spotlight moment. Gumshoe is designed to feed that by... Uh, giving everyone pools so that the players with pools left will be in the spotlight. But I sort of accentuate that by saying, here's a way you can signal the GM ahead of time. By the way, this is going to happen. I am going to take a headshot and, and drop a dude. Uh, make sure there's a cool moment for me to do that. Uh, and that, that, that signaling provides what I think is, is the best thing about role-playing is collaboration. Because any, any, I mean, we've had, people who sat around and told each other stories since caveman times, <laughs> but the ability to build that out together that uh, Byron says something and you say something back and Tara comes up with a third brilliant idea. And it all sort of changes what everyone thought was happening. 
I mean, this is what, you know, jazz players go their whole careers trying to have happen. And we, as tabletop role players, that should be our default, right? And I love making uh, mechanics and making rules and making games where characters and players are invited to collaborate, that letting them build part of it is is part of the fun. And that's really one of the big drives behind uh, Dracula Dossier, uh, which I should mention uh, ripped off Robin Laws' uh, idea for the Armitage Files in a similar way as a collaborative campaign. But it very much played into what I consider, you know, my sweet spot as a designer. That is outstanding. Um, I'm, I, I personally cannot wait to, to get started playing the game. I, uh, even though I'm not going to yeah. shoot a guy in the head and drop a dude, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm going to sit behind my computer. and You might. Never know. Never know. Yeah. You get, you're probably going to smash that. him with a keyboard. I'll tell you what, the agency better pay for my therapy. You will, yes. you will, um, uh, you will digitally intrude upon him and uh, oh. uh, post his embarrassing collection of feet to the internet. You're absolutely right. I, you're absolutely right. You, you, you pretend to be a prince from another country. And then <laughs> incrementally. Yeah. Drain his, bank account. Just drain his bank, bank account. Just drain his bank account. We have or, to or, fund this operation somehow. Yeah. When, when the vampires find your guys' headquarters, everybody's out doing their black bagging and uh, and wet work. And the only person there is Evan. And uh, he has to fight a vampire with his uh, wireless mouse. <laughs> well, maybe you've got your uh, headquarters all wired up to be a smart HQ and he can, you know, turn on the holy water sprinklers. The yeah. holy water sprinklers. <laughs> oh, I like it. Ah. Oh, that's, that's, so that's, that's straight out of Blade right there. Isn't are any of us ordained? All right. We're, we're going to have to. Have somebody who can make holy water. Yeah, well, you know, you'll have to cross your fingers that holy water will work. That's part of the yeah. fun and magic uh, yeah. of Knights Black Angels. Um, in, yeah, in the alpha playtest, uh, one of my players played a, a Catholic priest who'd worked with the CIA uh, in Poland with solidarity, and uh, so he. It was a very clear signal to me that yes, holy water had better do something. <laughs> and even though it didn't work the way that he thought it was going to work, it didn't do nothing. And so that was the fun was sort of exploring the, the the truth about vampires and when it did and i think that's the, that's the fun of, of yeah. thrillers and investigative games anyway is sort of that uncovering uh the pattern and saying oh yeah that makes sense in oh. between shrieking and you know unloading your gun at you know full automatic <laughs> on the guy that's also fun well it's definitely one of the things about the game that appealed to me was that the characters start knowing nothing and the arc begins entering the mystery and every time you play, you know, you have no idea exactly what is the composition of vampires but, and, and what their strengths and weaknesses. But to start from that point where we're in this real world where there are no vampires and slowly either uh, becoming wiser or more insane with the belief that there are vampires. Mm -hmm. So I, that's one of the things that really appeals to me, that entry point with it. I think it's very rich. I don't know how long we're going to stay quasi-innocent, but uh, <laughs> that's, of course, up to our, our keeper storyteller, Byron. Get I'm going to go about 30 minutes. We're going to make 30, <laughs> 30 minutes. minutes. <laughs> Episode <laughs> one. So by nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah, that's about right. <laughs> and that was one of the things that I, I uh, designed into Knights Black Agents was the ability for it to have a complete arc. Like you say, it starts from you know nothing and ends with we've killed the vampires. We've killed the, the vampire lords, the center of the conspiracy. Uh, it's It doesn't depend on being open-ended and just saying well now what you know mm. it, it, like a like like a good thriller you know it it rises it has rising action hits a climax and then that's the end and then you're out and you can you know make sequels to it as they do with the born movies but you don't have to if you don't want to that's and that's a, um, a or you can start over with a an entirely different batch of vampires and that's sort of the fun of that yeah and there's a uh, psychological element that plays into that right because the the human brain can only take so much tension that's why horror movies have those interruptions those quiet moments mm -hmm. that allow you to recharge and then hit you again out of nowhere um and i like you know the, the flow of this campaign you know the 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 hills and valleys there can be amazing oh absolutely no pressure byron I know. I'm telling yeah. you, man. I'm excited. I've played Cthulhu with these guys for a long time, <laughs> except for Jason. I've been uh, doing some other stuff with him and, and watching his cult and Cthulhu games on YouTube and stuff before I was uh, able to be a part here. So it sounds and, like everyone has internalized uh, the, the, the fear that they need to. 
Yeah, and we're, we're that's going to be the psychological uh, horror and that side of the game is going to be a big part. It's one of the right. things we agreed on that we yeah. wanted to do. And and again, like I say, uh, the other side of that coin though is you're not you know some you know flapper or drunk parapsychologist in 1927. <laughs> You're Jason Bourne or the next best equivalent of Jason Bourne. You're super spies. You're badass. Um, you should be able to, you know, go through human mooks uh, without too much trouble, uh, of course, which makes it all the more terrible when you do run into vampires. Um, so uh, sort of, I, I guess I would encourage players to sort of grab onto that aspect of their characters. So, uh, uh, John Rogers, the guy that did Leverage, uh, calls it competence porn. Um, and I think that uh, it, that that is the spirit in which you should get it. Just yeah. it's just a little ashamed at how good your character is at that. And I think that's strong. <laughs> yeah, I like it. And Leverage is one of my favorite like spy kind of uh, action shows. So I'm definitely going to be pulling some stuff out of that uh, yep. out of the thing um, for sure. That might have so. changed my perspective a tiny bit on my character, actually. It's competence porn. I like that. You know, he's... <laughs> I mean, I he can actually shoot I don't want to yeah. discourage anyone from playing a, a, a feckless goof if that's what they want to play, but yeah. I'm saying... Well, yeah. You're going to yeah. be really good at being feckless. Right, yes. <laughs> you're just, you're just like the best hacker in the entire world, that's all, you know. Right. Like, at yeah. least top three. Yeah. As long as you awesome. feed me my kale salad, I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be doing whatever you need. <laughs> your kale salad like the Popeye of, hack of hackers <laughs> <laughs> nice he's gonna have really big forearms from typing so much <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Whatever, typing. whatever typing just confidence porn people at this least with a, one a public right? stream. His, only, his only weakness is gluten <laughs> <laughs> just to feed it gluten and having his neck torn out those are his two weaknesses <laughs> rather effective that would be it, it'll slow him down it'll at least slow him down <laughs> if i could wind up becoming a gluten intolerant vampire that would be incredible <laughs> yes it's like how do you how do you know if a vampire is gluten intolerant oh he'll tell you yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'll hear like, about yeah, yeah. you'll know why is dracula getting like this shipment of like you know uh, lotion and it's like uh, he's, he's got an itching problem from his gluten allergy well in a way vampirism is like the perfect keto right it's just yeah. all protein <laughs> as, he, as he approaches his victim and says please tell keto. me you have not eaten any gluten within the last 48 hours he has to, that's why he has to keep the the heroes penned up in the in the prison for a month like he did yeah, jonathan Harkey. he just had to make sure he'd sweated out all the bread he, eat these, <laughs> he, uh, eat these all the victims snacks. have to fill out questionnaires. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> have you had carbohydrates in the past? <laughs> may may right. I peek at your food diary? <laughs> That's awesome. I never eat pasta. <laughs> <laughs> He's an impasta. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> bad joke. He did it. Bad, bad joke. <laughs> Well, man, uh, are you guys ready to do some character backgrounds? I am. So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, all right. thank you all so much for uh, running and playing. Uh, enjoy uh, uh, Nice Black Agents. Enjoy the Dracula dossier, if that is indeed what you're going to play. I think it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, Byron, thanks so much for uh, inviting me uh, to be part of your stream and uh, to be uh, 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 seconded to the Myth Brigade for this little bit of time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Very much Cheers. appreciate Cheers. your time. We appreciate it, man. Uh, Good to meet watching. everybody. Cheers. Uh, keep your blood on the inside, as we say at Nights Like Agents Headquarters. I'm going to write that down. Right. Your blood okay. on the inside. I like it. I like it. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank Thanks, you very Ken. much. Thank you. It was great meeting you. Good night, Ken. Thank you. All right, so welcome, you know, anybody who might be just tuning in, I'm Byron and your host on Myth Brigade today, and we're going to be doing some character bonds for session zero here of Knights Black Agents. Mm -hmm. The campaign's going to be known as Blood Rising. Oh. Uh, Jason Bourne meets vampires, as Ken so eloquently put. Uh, as the basis for the game. And uh, in your upper right-hand corner, you've got the Wire Rat Tesla. 
or Tesla, whatever. It could be. It, it, we'll go with Tesla. It's, it depends on how. You, it depends on how. It'll, you want it'll to change the every Z. session. Right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, below him uh, over there. So let me see. I don't know if that's to my right, whichever way he is. But uh, the wet work, the red lily uh, Japanese assassin. And then we have uh, the medic, Dr. Mitchell, uh, down there, Tara Roy. And uh, our handler, kind of the father of the group, uh, Johnny Walcott, uh, as of uh, earlier today. <laughs> I don't know how you forgot you had a friend named uh, the same name as your character, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> was he really a friend? If you forgot his name, he, he posted for the first time on Facebook in like five years. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that's oh, right. That's where I got that name. That's where from. I got that name. All right. Do we need to put a, uh, from real life? Do we exactly. need to put the caption exactly. that any any uh, resemblance to people you know living or dead is purely a coincidence or something? Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we have the fabulous Jason Jones, our hacker, Evan Moyer. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, so, does it, who wants to go first on this wonderful adventure? I feel like we should high dive. You want to high dive? Well, there's five of you, so. Let's Hello. see. What kind I don't of have a wonderful. Roll? I don't have a wonderful dice roller. Well, at least a at least a D five. So. So a D6? D6. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody roll on the first person to roll a six. How about that? Got a first person to roll a six? Okay, let's see. Uh, Got a four. <laughs> Not me. Somebody's like, Got you it. need dice? Got it. Dice for this? What? You didn't roll a six, Tyler? I'm, I'm ashamed. <laughs> I could lie to you. <laughs> 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 That's an inside joke, Jason. We'll talk about that later. He'll always do 12 damage, I guarantee uh, it. I roll rather <laughs> rather high. <laughs> rather <Two>. frequent. <laughs> Who got the highest then? We just keep rolling. We got a two, three. I had a four. A had four? A four? A four? All right. Uh, I, I tell you what. Let's let Jason go first since it's his channel. Oh, geez. It's your <laughs> channel. Too. It's your channel, man. What? <laughs> since it he's is. carried me this far, like we might as well just let him carry me into this. So, uh, especially since I stole this idea from him, which he and Kate stole from someone Yes, else. I did. I stole, and I, so, I wish uh, I remember the guy's name. He He's a, a video game engineer, and uh, they were doing, um, it was like a, a Warhammer 40K video game, and they did a Dark Heresy campaign to garner interest there. And yeah, they did this whole bonding thing. It was really cool. Uh, but I think we do it better. Our, ours is a little better because it's like Mad Libs. Just fun. Yeah, I I I love it. Love, I love it. And I, I <laughs> stole this. I have stole this idea, and I think uh, you know it was really interesting to be able to write them from the information you guys gave me about your characters. So you know it kind of fits with the the vision that you have there. Some of them are a little quirky. Not gonna <laughs> lie. Some of them, you know, were I, I stole literally straight from Jason. Um, are you, are you going to uh, give anyone cancer? Because that was the biggest dick move I've ever uh, done. So much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give anybody cancer, but I will give you a blank, and the character that you pick might give you cancer. There I you mean, go. That's possible. So, all right. So I got uh, I got a total of eight all together. So it's ranked into two tables of one to four. So give me uh, two. 1d4 rolls 1d4 rolls yep and the just tell me the first one and then we'll get down first all right so we have a four four awesome all right so uh i have talked about my belief in ufos <laughs> to blank i'm gonna have to say red lily um, All right. I, and I don't think I get the best response, but I'm always just jabbering on. All right. So Red Lily is completely convinced that UFOs exist. Based <laughs> off of, uh, I believe it now. <laughs> based, based off of your information. However. Aliens are real, man. She thinks that both of you have lost some sanity. Uh, <laughs> so if talk of a conspiracy comes up, uh, then uh oh i'm sorry actually red lily pick pick another player um, this is a this is a three-way what 
Oh my. The best kind. So soon. Extreme bugs. <laughs> we barely know each other. Right out of the box, man. <laughs> TBMA. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Tesla. Ooh. Tesla. Okay, so Tesla thinks that both of you are insane. <laughs> um, Perfect. So if conspiracy comes if, if talking about a conspiracy comes up, then all three of you are distracted. Oh. And because you start arguing about what is going on. Whether UFOs are real or not. And, and you will have <laughs> you'll have minus one to any sense trouble rules. And I would have to think that what I'm trying to do here is just make you understand how this all maps back to Roswell. Right? If you just fucking watch sense. the reports, you'll see it. Uh, yes, I love it. Uh, yeah. That's why you keep me in a van. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the van and shut up. Uh, all right, go ahead. Give me number right. two. Number two is going to be a two. A two. Oh, oh this is awesome. And this I is don't awesome. have either one of my legs. Okay. So uh, so give me uh, who give me who who do you have this one with? Oh, with with no context. No context. Uh oh. Or or I will give you some context if you want. Uh, All right. So blank has been coaching me on getting dates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's definitely Johnny because he's a handler, right? Like he's got it all figured out. <laughs> and some of these girls that he set up the dates with, I'm not quite sure about because uh, they don't seem very interested in me, really. So whenever you can hear. Johnny talking to you or coaching you, you get one free point in flirting. <laughs> no one, no one, took flirting. Say, no, one took no one it. took flirting, so somebody was getting it. <laughs> yep. It's my job as the director to make sure you guys are equipped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to flirt. Okay. Nice. So you see, my son, you just need to approach them. Have confidence. It'll be fine. Right. Just take take it take your condoms out of the drawer and just get it done. <laughs> so don't use the c word in the United States, is what you're saying. Then <laughs> got it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the, the women do not care for that. Right. All right, Jason. All right, Jason. We'll let you pick who's next. Um, Doctor Mitchell needs to go next, I think. Doctor Mitchell. All right. Okay. All, All right. D four. Yep. D four. One. A one. Oh, mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah, that's great. Sounds fun. So someone lost a limb <laughs> during, <laughs> during my residency. I misdiagnosed a patient. Oh. It was never found out. However, I slipped into a state of depression and alcoholism. I reach out to my sponsor to get through these tough times. This agent knows of my struggle and can sense when I'm on the edge. Who have you told about your your problem? It's got to be Johnny. The handler's got to know. Johnny. <laughs> so you will get plus one to stability rolls whenever Johnny's around. My child, it was not your fault. You must forgive yourself. The team needs you now. Now collect yourself. <laughs> All right, give me no roll number two. 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 All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was on the run from government officials after stealing some high-level military-grade drugs. Jesus, Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you are shady. Uh, I'm <laughs> at... <laughs> like you still have your license uh, uh, what kind of doctor are you uh, I funny. met uh, I met blank and they helped me hide them <laughs> obviously Evan, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and Evan yes what city what city are the drugs hit in I'm not going to tell you that <laughs> no oh really um I, I really? think the, um, uh. You know, there's that spot in uh, London, actually. It's uh, off the tube station. You mean in Big, in Big Ben, maybe? 
That's why he's so big because he's got the blue pills. <laughs> that was my uncle's name. <laughs> All right. So you, you, you hit him in the tower of one. <laughs> both of you guys, uh, both of you guys will get plus one to urban survival in oh, London. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Doctor Death. <laughs> <laughs> Byron, what kind of drugs are they? Do I get to decide that? You get to decide. They're high. They're high level military grade drugs. Wow. Ooh. So they can be stimulants. The good they could be, you know, uh, things to help with infection. Ooh. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you write super that story. Super healing as, drugs. Uh, <laughs> super healing drugs. You know. Uh, could be the drugs know. that made vampires. <laughs> it could be. Ooh. You never know. May, may, mega meth. Or Magnum. Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you just tweak Super Matt. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing, Tesla? I'm digging a hole. <laughs> China. <laughs> All right, Dr. Mitchell, Tara, who is uh, who's next? Uh, Brent's next. Brent's next. Tesla. All right. I, I got a four on my first one. You got a four on your first one? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, you have an affinity for cars. However, <laughs> blank is a horrible backseat driver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, Jason. Because it's <laughs> a lot. Cool. It's all not right. that I'm a so, horrible backseat driver. It's you're a shit driver, and you're always going on the wrong side of the road. If I'm being honest, so. Well, here's the here's the here's the perk is that if Evan is complaining about your driving in character, then you get a plus one to spend for driving rolls. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> it makes me really angry. Oh, don't encourage God. him. Uh oh. Either one of them. <laughs> That's amazing. And then uh, my second one is one. It's a one? It's a one. <laughs> you deserve every bit of this one. I'm just not letting you know that right now. All right. So I have multiple cover identities. However, I am horrible at names. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so blank is my go-to name generator. Oh. <laughs> It's gonna be, it's gonna be Lily. Oh, yes. Lily? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because, because I'm so, like, oh, she's Japanese. She she so, <laughs> why your name is Lily Pistachio Hot Pants? Ah, uh, yes, uh, Bon Jovi. Uh, so, <laughs> when <laughs> Joe <Joel> Bon Jovi. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whenever, whenever you have to have a cover identity. Red Lily gets to tell you whatever the name's going to be. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cheek or, and or Chong. Okay. Right. You, <laughs> am I seriously <laughs> making you a fake license for Cheech Chong then? <laughs> Cheech D Chong? Seriously? <laughs> a, and, and. Uh, all right, Brent, who's next, Dan or Tyler? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Tyler. I got front. a one. The front of my uh, book here. I, you're in here somewhere, I swear. I, mean, I think so. This is this is a price I pay for organization. I don't know how to find anything. You said a one. A one. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, I am always deathly serious. If you read my facial expressions a woman of few words and live more by her actions however blank who who's blank um we're gonna go with uh tara dr mitchell so tara you mitchell. know you know the one thing that can bring a smile to red lily's face even in the most dire situations Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> Fireball whiskey, that's what it is? 
<laughs> he's like, he's like, girl, get the pick. Okay, I got. It. That's right. Let is me that, try is this it, extra thing of napalm. Is that your answer? <laughs> Fireball whiskey? No, that was just a answer here. <laughs> um, what does bring a smile to to Lily's face? I'm gonna need a minute to think about that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll go with my second one. Go with your second one. We'll come back. Mm-hmm. We got a uh, three. Three. Uh, all right. I'm gonna feel like maybe you should pick before we read this one. <laughs> I guess this one's gonna. <clears throat> We're just gonna randomize it for. Uh, it looks like Jason. Oh no! Oh no! No no no! Super. We're gonna we're, we're gonna Tara needs to pick what. Uh, okay, um, I got it. Thing is first. Um, I when I when I want her to smile, um, uh-huh. I show her a, a a picture of the guys that I've uh, done some sort of Snapchat filter on one of the, uh, of any of the <laughs> Snapchat <laughs> filters. Snapchat filters of, of these guys. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Kitten, kitten ears and puppy dog noses, all that shit. Yeah. No, we don't eat them. All right, Tyler, who's this? Who's your second bond gonna be with? Uh, no uh, context. Uh, yeah, Jason. I rolled that. Jason. I just rolled right. a D four because. All right. So when Lily was a small girl, she had what kind of pet? Uh. A Tamagotchi. <laughs> Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. She, she I never, I never would have saw that head. coming. <laughs> <A teacher pet. laughs> I mean, sure it's screens just filled with poop. It's, it's, it's been dead for a year. I'm going to say a cobra. A cobra? Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Okay. Nice. Responsible so parents and whatnot. You know. Here's the problem. It died. <laughs> but she, what did she, it die from, Jason? <laughs> How did her cobra I, die? I, I have a joking answer in a serious one. She bit it uh, as a joking one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think the serious one is, um, I, I think it struck at her, and, and she was convinced that she could trust it, and she chopped its head off. I like it. Deep, like, kind of like a Ricky Ticky Tabby type thing. It reminds me of that running Chuck Norris joke, that, you know. <laughs> Why I'm so cold hearted. A cobra bit my own best friend. And after three days of pain and agony, <laughs> the cobra died. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. That leaves Mr. Uh, Johnny Walcott as All the, right. final, the final uh, final solution here. The father of the group. JW. Right. Roll 2D4. Yep. All right. So. Got six. No, you got to give me them individually. Were you paying attention the whole time? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I thought, I was just re- I thought everyone was rolling 2d4. I'm terrible with this. So are, I can see it now. Our handler's like, like what, what was separate going them. on? All right. So three. Wait, where, what's happening? I was watching <laughs> Netflix. It's fine. Three. <laughs> it's not like I could see the dice. But all right. All right. Uh, all right. So you consider yourself a father figure on this team. <laughs> okay. Right? But you know a dark secret about blank. Who, who do you know a secret about? Well, I guess I already know a dark secret about Dr. Mitchell. Here, I'll roll. Uh, that's Dr. Mitchell. I'll go for... Uh, all right. It's going to be Evan. Evan? Oh, what nice. Doing? Okay, so Evan has a substance abuse problem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> however, however, you use your skill as a counselor to keep his demons at bay. And you know, so everyone's whenever he can, whenever he can hear your, whenever he can hear your voice, he gets one free pool to spend on anything. Oh, uh, wow. whatever, whatever general ability or uh, investigative ability that you're using. Can I spend that to acquire cocaine? Then uh, you could. <laughs> What's that my substance? Do you, do you somebody want to pick filled. the substance for me? What what do I abuse? Yeah, what does he abuse? Uh, I, I don't say that mess. Open. I want to have my teeth. Is all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just started meth. You still have yeah. your teeth. <laughs> you won't by the end of the game, though. <laughs> but you <laughs> could get that. Could be your your attraction to becoming a vampire is that you get fangs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really yeah, so. a drug, does it? it <laughs> you be... want to be a vampire so you can have no. permanent <laughs> teeth, <laughs> and you can do all the meth in the world, even the mega meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the mega meth. 
The, the vampire <laughs> dental plan is amazing. <laughs> it's true. It's on. It's on Johnny though. What, what? What's my substance of choice? Um. Does it have to be traditional drugs? No, we could be. It's it's a substance abuse. So whatever he can abuse, whatever. Fireball. I guess broccoli. <laughs> uh, but and are we supposed to have no exposure to the occult at this point? Like he couldn't be addicted already to like say small amounts of watered down vampire blood. Mm. <laughs> Maybe oh, it's a, a street drug, and I don't know what it is. Like one drop of vampire blood in a gallon of whiskey. Mm. Okay. Or, or, or if that's off, that's okay. I'm just just put out some ideas. No, you could uh, you could do really whatever you want. So I mean, you I, you might not know what that is. Yeah, you know I what love I mean? it. It's got a different name, uh, right? It's got some other street yeah, it's name. Got a that's street what it name. is. Yeah, it's got a street yeah. name. Death meth. Yeah. Um. It's called the Red Drip. <laughs> it could be the Red Drip. The Red Drip. That sounds like an STD. <laughs> it does. It does. It's got the red uh, drip. Let's call it. Um. You could get pads for it. I'm glad our super spies have evolved to drug addicts. Yes. <laughs> what why happens, we're all, man? Why we're all burned yeah, right now? A, a random. Random. <laughs> They're not employed by anybody. It's called Street Scarlet. Street Scarlet. Street oh. Scarlet. And I, like I guess that. we have to ask, does he know, does he have any inkling at this point? Does Johnny have any inkling that Street Scarlet is, or Scarlet is actually this doctored alcohol? Like it's been given a drip of something. Uh, well, I mean, that could be, uh, we know, can leave it up to you. We, we suggested a, a vampire blood, but yeah, Iron, you might decide later on. We, we might have theories, right? But yeah, you have you have theories so far, but you, you maybe it may don't be know some yet. other part of the vampire. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> is that the is that the white Romanian? <laughs> it's like a white Russian, but a different milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he went there. He did. He went. <laughs> oh, I'm so off so to a flame, man. <laughs> I am lactose intolerant. To <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm, sorry. Cool. I'm sorry, Jason. I forgot that Myth Brigade was an adult channel. Uh, yeah. It is. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Oh, man. You, you broke the seal. Oh, oh, man. Dude. Oh, damn. You, you ruined it. everything. I'm sorry. sorry. That's why we can't make <laughs> uh, Yeah, so right. I'm addicted to streets. Dan, what's your second scrolling? one? It Got was it. also a three. Also a three. Yeah, All right. Three and three gate make six, you know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, Thank you, Dr. Four and two. Uh, <laughs> well, but the first one. So uh, I have little mechanic skill. So blank acts as my right hand. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I only have one connection right now. Just to let you guys know. <laughs> uh, well, nobody, that makes sense. Nobody, that it, it would does. be Tesla. It does. Tesla. Okay, so uh, you get one free mechanic pool whenever Tesla's around. Oh, all right. Why you would be doing it if Tesla is around? I is know that makes sense. Right. It's like uh, I should have been. <laughs> all right, but maybe he's holding the flashlight. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. give me that. Give me that. That seven seven sixteenth spanner. He's like. That's right. I, I don't know. Well, and you know, Tesla works on things all day long. Sometimes he falls asleep. I'm next to him, and then I can work on them because I have plus one skill point. There you go. There you go. Just his presence. I, I, it's like a reverse of that whole thing about like a angry father making their son hold the flashlight and then yelling at them constantly because he's not shining it in the right place. Oh, <laughs> we have the same dad. <laughs> right. No, Johnny. So, the light comes out of the other end. Here, turn that around. <laughs> Hopefully you guys all uh, enjoy these character bonds uh, in the game here. And uh, so with that, I have one final thing, and then we can end the stream, and then we'll uh, discuss really quick offline uh, when we're going to play and get this ball really rolling yeah. to, uh, to go. So, uh, <laughs> so this is what I have for you. An evil lurks in the shadows, waiting for those unaware of its threat. It can sense your fear, despair, and loss. It was there all along, but you never saw it. It was hiding, turning the cogs of the world from behind closed doors, never to be seen in the light. You know now that it is there. That knowledge weakens its grasp on your throat. Almost in a daze, you consider your reasons to hunt it your reasons to fight it, 
and your reasons to live despite it. A fog clouded the judgment of your predecessors. You can see through it. Lifting the veil from your eyes, hope being your light, skills and determination your weapons. You are but a killer without a country, honor and pain all she has left. A wizard of gadgetry running from a broken life. A humanitarian looking to save the sick and dying from an unfathomable death. A genius like maestra of code and data, struggling to belong. A father to hold them together and give them ease when darkness finds them. The family you belong to now is all you have. A remnant of your past, a horrifying reminder of its power to destroy. It has taken all you cared about, all you have worked towards, all that you had. You know you must fight to survive, to beat it back into the shadows. You stagger to your feet as courage fills your heart. You can sense it knows that you are aware of its indiscretions. You must strike at its heart before it can find you. You must make it bleed and realize it is not as powerful as it believes. You are Knight's Black Agents, and this is your fate now. 